Hello and welcome to the next lecture in the course on introduction to computer and network performance analysis using queuing systems. My name is Professor Varsha Apte and I am a faculty member in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering IIT Bombay. So, we are going to talk about open queuing networks today. So, let me uh, start introducing that. So, so far we have uh, looked at basically uh, a queuing system where there is one kind of uh, server or one set of servers that are uh, that represent something like one node you can say okay just one resource uh, type or one re, uh, one node okay um, but what if there is a request uh, that needs services from various as they call as are called stations okay for example if you are looking at packets going through a multiple uh, links on a network path right so suppose um, this is a network let me just draw let us say these are some routers ok and there might be some connections here and uh, then maybe it is all coming together to this one router ok. We could have uh, packets that, uh, that are coming to this router and that then they have to go to of course they will go on this link and then go to this router and then go to this router and then go to this router and only then maybe there is a, a destination here right. So, uh, it they will go through multiple uh, routers and links uh, before they go to the destination. Um, similarly, we can have uh, a, a, a server uh, center server side of a let us say web application ok. So, a web application all web applications today are not supported by just one node right that is of course we have the web server but we also have let us say the database server right um, and any request that comes to the web server will very likely have to go to the database server also before it is done right and only then maybe it will be done and then it can go back to the client. Okay. So, uh, this is another example then if you look inside a uh, actually just inside a server machine okay, if you look inside a machine as such you have the CPU which you know I just like to show like that let us say this is a CPU and you can have a disk and uh, a thread could be doing uh, some CPU work it will need CPU sometimes and then it might need some IO and only then it will be done ok. So, so far we have been completely focused on a request that uh, just needs one thing and then seems like it is done, but uh, it may actually after it is done with one service it may need another service and that is what we need the concept of queuing networks for ok. So, this is now uh, from queues we go to queuing network where after this exit we can add another queue to which a request goes ok. So, now it is going to another queue then it can leave from here and go to another queue ok. So, uh, this is what the a queuing network is and uh, as a first very simple introduction to queuing networks we will just look at something called a tandem queuing network. Uh, what is a tandem queuing network? It is when requests visit multiple nodes in sequence and then exits. So, it just goes to this goes to this goes to this and then exits. Tandem is opposed to what? It is as opposed to where there can be some branching for example that it goes here with let us say some probability 0 0.5 and to some other queuing system with probability 0 0.5. So, some other server and then maybe exits. So, this is called branching and another thing that can happen uh, in all the examples uh, in, in uh, 2 out of the 3 examples that I gave you in the previous page. Uh, actually there can be something called feedback. So, suppose after server 2 with some probability the request needs another service. So, suppose this is probability 0 0.1 and this is probability 0 0.9 with some probability the request needs another service at server 1. This can happen when uh, we have again consider the web server the web server uh, and database server example uh, 
um, in, in real uh, scripts and uh, dynamic uh, web uh, applications that run on the server, uh, it is rarely that the request just visits the web server and then the database server and then exits, it is actually almost never like this. There is always uh, once the request visits the web server and the database server, it will actually need another service at the web server and then it may need to go to the database server again and then it needs another service at the web server. So, this may happen many times. Similarly, in the example that uh, I gave you about CPUs and, and uh, CPU and IO, it is almost never the case that uh, there will be a process that just does goes to the CPU once and goes to IO needs IO once and then exits the system. It is actually going to need many visits to the CPU and alternate like it will have a CPU burst, then an IO burst, then a CPU burst, then an IO burst. This is something you would have run, uh, learnt in operating systems. So, different types of resources are often needed by requests multiple times uh, to fulfill their service. But as a simple example in the beginning, we are going to not consider any of these, okay. We are not going to consider any of these possibilities and just imagine a uh, queuing network which is completely in sequence and request never comes back to any server and also there is no splitting and there is no branching. Okay. So, this is just to keep things simple in the beginning to uh, reason through queuing networks. Uh, so, this kind of a queuing network is all called a tandem queuing network. Actually, a packet uh, network path uh, is a good example of a tandem queuing network. A packet is uh, unless it is in going in a loop, it is uh, rarely going to come back uh, to a, a router, it really should never come back to a router that means something is wrong. Also we can imagine that maybe between two a source and a destination there is exactly one path, so there is no branching uh, that is happening. So packet network path is a good example for a tandem queuing network. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, what are the kind of uh, parameters and uh, metrics that we can define for such a network? Uh, we can have n servers in the tandem queue, here we are seeing an example with 3 servers. Uh, we have uh, of course we have the tau i, now all of these the tau and uh, uh, other metrics that we had seen for a single node uh, is going to get a, sub, a subscript i. Uh, which is uh, basically showing that it corresponds to the server i. So, we show the servers as s1, s2, s3, uh, tau1 is the service time at server 1, tau2 is the service time at server 2, tau3 is at server 3. So, we have uh, that and what we have is one external arrival rate. Uh, we call this uh, uh, an external uh, arrival rate uh, because uh, this is it is sort of external to this whole system. In a way this uh, This uh, arrival here is also an arrival to this queue, there is going to be an arrival here, there is going to be an that, that is an arrival to server S3. These are all going to be internal arrivals because they are uh, coming from server S1 to S2 and coming from S2 to S3. So, these are internal arrivals, but there is only one external arrival rate and that is what uh, is uh, the actual work uh, coming to this system. So, that is the parameter. So, we have the lambda and we have the tau i's. Um, and uh, we are going to consider only infinite buffer for the queuing networks. So, we are not going to consider k and so on. We can have multiple servers, but uh, again for this example right now we are going to just consider one server. So, we are considering C1 equal to 1, C2 equal to 1 and C3 equal to 1. <coughs> then we have uh, a new uh, metric called the system throughput. Again we need to distinguish uh, individual throughputs, so lambda i is going to be the throughput of the station i right? Uh, because here also there is an exit rate, this is going to be the lambda 1, this is lambda 1, this is the exit rate and this is lambda 2 and lambda 3 in fact will be equal to lambda cis. So, the exit rate out of the system is the system throughput and the exit out of each station is uh, the node throughput or the station throughput. Then we have the system response time which is this whole time, time from entering this uh, system the queuing network to completely exiting it okay, from here to here. 
uh, but we will of course have a particular response time at each station or each node. So, the response time here there will be R1, this will be R2, this will be R3. We have uh, server utilization makes sense only for each node, there is no such thing as a whole system utilization. So, we have utilization of the servers at this station, the row 1, at this station row 2 and at this station row 3. Uh, we will have uh, number of customers, uh, again number of customers in the whole system is not a very interesting metric, we will have it at N1, uh, N1 will be for this node, N2 for this node n3 for this node and so on same for uh, the uh, number of uh, customers in the queue and similarly for waiting time. Uh, a more interesting uh, metric that we ask for uh, a queuing network is what is called the bottleneck throughput. Now what is a bottleneck throughput? Bottleneck always refers to the resource uh, in any kind of uh, connected system that is going to be the resource that slows down the capacity of the system or that determines the overall capacity of the system. If you have for example, a road network, okay, there can be some uh, a road that is uh, wider than one road and then it all feeds into the, a, a small narrow road and then there is a big road. If this is the kind of a, a, a road system that you have in, in, in actual road traffic, then this it looks like a neck of a bottle. Uh, so, this is called that is why it is called uh, a bottleneck and this uh, road is the one that will actually determine what is the throughput of the cars in this road network. So, that is uh, called bottleneck throughput. Uh, remember that this was irrelevant when you are talking about a single queue because that single just if you are only talking about one uh, station then the capacity of that station is going to determine the uh, the, the maximum throughput of that system. But now when you have multiple then you have to worry about is S1 going to be the station which is actually the slowest one, is S2 going to be the station or node uh, that is going to be the slowest one, is S3 going to be the one that limits my capacity. Okay? So, that is uh, the uh, which is the bottleneck server and what is its bottleneck throughput capacity. Okay? So, this is the maximum capacity uh, of requests per second that this queuing network can support. So, uh, let us start uh, calculating these. Okay. Um, so, uh, let us start with system throughput, uh, asymptotes and non-asymptotes. Let us take an example. Suppose this tau 1 is 5 milliseconds, this is uh, 20 milliseconds and this is 10 milliseconds. Okay. Um, so, the I will write the mu 1 as usual mu 1 uh, mu denotes the service rate. So, the mu 1 for the station 1 is uh, 1000 by 5 that is 200 requests per second, uh, mu 2 is uh, 50 requests per second and mu 3 is 100 requests per second. And uh, so, the system throughput um, basically if we have the lambda. Uh, If the lambda is less than all of these mu 1, mu 2 and mu 3, then it is clear that system throughput which we denote as lambda sys is going to be lambda. right? Uh, for example, if lambda is uh, 30 requests per second, okay, if 30 requests per second is coming here, since this allows 200 requests per second, 30 will go here. Since this capacity is 50 requests per second, it, its output will be 30 because those the laws of throughput apply individually to each of these queuing systems. right? If the capacity of this queuing system is 40, 50 requests per second and 30 uh, arrival rate is coming here, then it can do 30 and then all the way it will be 30. So, uh, if the arrival rate is less than the uh, service rates of each of the stations, then we know that the system throughput should be equal to the arrival rate. Um, and uh, uh, what is the asymptotic uh, value? So, what if lambda goes to infinity? Okay. For high load uh, when lambda goes to infinity, clearly uh, this system we remember that for, for one node we have uh, as lambda goes to infinity that the for a single server node uh, lambda goes to so capital lambda that is the throughput goes to mu right? for single node.
ok. What is going to happen here is that uh, the output the uh, maximum throughput that this system can produce will be determined by the slowest node right. So, imagine if uh, lambda here in this example is uh, 500 requests per second ok. So, then this one will the first one will, will be able to do 200 ok. So, let us say take the example of 500 then the first server will be able to do 200 because that is what its capacity is. Now, if 200 is coming to server S2 uh, its capacity is 50. So, it will only be able to do 50, uh, but now 50 is less than the mu 3 is equal to 100. So, this will be uh, actually produce 50. So, essentially the value that uh, the system throughput will get is the minimum of all service rates right. So, that should be obvious. So, as lambda tends to infinity lambda sys tends to uh, the minimum of over i of all the mu i's which is uh, minimum you can say the which is equal to the minimum of i of over 1 over tau i. Basically uh, this is also how the bottleneck throughput is de defined. Okay, the bottleneck throughput is actually going to be the minimum of mu i's and uh, lambda sys as lambda tends to infinity basically tends to uh, the bottleneck throughput. Okay. So, this is about the throughputs. Now, uh, we can uh, look at the server utilizations. Uh, again, let us look at the non asymptotes and the asymptotes. We can take the same examples, this is 5 milliseconds, this is uh, 20 milliseconds, this is 10 milliseconds ok, which means mu 1 is 200 requests per second, mu 2 is 50 requests per second and mu 3 is 100 requests per second. Uh, so, what is the uh, utilization going to look like? Again let us take the case of uh, lambda being less than all of the mu 1's. This also means that the whole network is stable, stable queuing network, qn for queuing network right. So, if it is the whole network is stable uh, then uh, and the arrival rates rate is less than the service rate of each of the um, queuing network then we know that actually the each node throughput is actually going to be that lambda. It is going to be the arrival rate because lambda is less than each of the service rates in which case the uh, utilization is trivial rho 1 is going to be same as normal is going to be uh, lambda tau 1, rho 2 will be lambda tau 2 and rho 3 is equal to lambda tau 3. Now, we should take the case, the cases become very interesting when this is not satisfied. What if lambda is greater than either one of mu 1, mu 2 or mu 3 ok. So, let us best to take an example here ok. Uh, first, let us take an example of uh, lambda equal to uh, let us take it as 150 requests per second ok. So, if it is 150 requests per second capital lambda 1 is going to be equal to 150 requests per second right. So, output here if this is 150 this is also going to be 150 because 150 is less than 200. Now, 150 is greater than 50. So, we have uh, row 2 the server 2 will actually be, a, uh, be, be the station 2 will actually be an unstable station and row 2 will be equal to 1. Row 1 here is of course, equal to 150 by 200 that is basically 0.75. Um, what will uh, capital lambda 2 be? 
this is going at full capacity. So, capital lambda 2 is actually going to be 50 requests per second. Since capital lambda 2 thus that is the arrival rate here is now going to be 50. So, then the station S3 is actually stable. So, row 3 will be 50 by 100 and that is equal to 0 0.5. So, utilizations uh, really depend uh, on the on what the uh, arrival rate to that particular station is going to be. Although in this case finally, what is lambda cis going to be? Lambda cis was determined again by whatever the uh, minimum here was. So, lambda cis is actually 50 requests per second. Okay, so, the output uh, final throughput was 50 requests per second, uh, but uh, server 1 was, was still uh, uh, utilized at 75 percent. Okay, so, remember that uh, if 50 requests per second was the arrival rate itself, then row 1 would have been row 1 would have been actually 50 by 200, but that is not the case here. Okay. Row 1 will actually be 0.75. Uh, let us take another example. I will again, so this is uh, 200 requests per second, this is 50 requests per second and this is 100 requests per second. And now let us take lambda is equal to, um, let us take it as 90. Okay. So, now 90 is less than 200, so uh, row 1 is going to be 90 by 200. Uh, but now 90 will come here again row 2 will be 1 and the exit out of here will again be 50 and row 3 will be again um, 50 by 100 equal to 0.5. You can see that uh, this because there is a slower server before this server actually the uh, this the the utilization of station 3 will just never reach 1 no matter what happens when lambda tends to infinity also the output of this server will go to 50 and therefore, this server asymptote of this server will always be 0.5. Okay. So, this is a very interesting thing uh, and we need to uh, have a general rule to write this. Uh, so, if you are talking about a station i, uh, if you are talking about the lambda tending to infinity for example. Uh, the higher load asymptote of, of server utilization. Um, the arrival rate to station i uh, will end up being the minimum of all of the maximum rates of the previous station. So, it will be the minimum of mu 1, mu 2, mu 3 to mu i minus 1. As lambda tends to infinity, uh, the minimum of the capacities of the previous stations will end up being the the arrival rate to the station i. Just like here as lambda tended to infinity the mu 1 here was 200 and mu 2 was 50. So, at station S 3 uh, it would basically get uh, not never more than 50. However, at station S 2 it could get 200 right, it could get 200. So, this is uh, uh, something now we are going to uh, uh, try and generalize this later, but let us look at one more metric here uh, which is the response time and q lengths. So, the response time uh, is actually as we saw in the previous uh, lectures, uh, first of all we will only define it for stable queuing network and we have to assume Poisson arrivals. Uh, remember that the throughputs and utilization did not require us to assume Poisson arrivals and we will also assume exponentially distributed service time, otherwise uh, some of the uh, rules here they are difficult to uh, remember that um, for example, if it is an M general mg 1 q we do not know that the, so this the if this is mg 1 then this will not be Poisson, the arrivals here will not be Poisson, only if this is m m 1 the arrivals here will be Poisson. So, uh, we will assume that the uh, uh, service time is also uh, exponential so that we can write a formula and if that is so remember that uh, that formula was given by uh, so R 1 will be equal to 
tau 1 divided by 1 minus rho 1 ok. And uh, similarly R2 will be tau 2 divided by 1 minus rho 2 and R3 will be tau 3 divided by 1 minus rho 3 and R6 will be just the sum of all this. And once we have these then uh, of course n1 will be equal to uh, lambda r1 and n2 will be equal to lambda r2 and n3 will be equal to lambda r3 and we can do the same thing with waiting times and q lengths. So, uh, let us summarize this uh, the all the matrix this, this is the matrix we were after. So, for a stable network which means that uh, the lambda multiplied by the maximum uh, of the tau i's will be less than 1. That means, the arrival rate is less than the slowest uh, service stations uh, rate uh, in the network. Uh, for a stable network, the system throughput is nothing but the arrival rate and uh, the bottleneck this is actually just defined for the queuing system nothing to do with the arrival rate as such. The bottleneck server is 1 over max of uh, over i of tau i this is just the slowest server. Um, utilization will simply be lambda tau i because it is a stable system. And uh, if we can assume exponential service time and single server then node response times are given by, by this and system response time is just the sum of all that and then we can get the rest by the Little's law. Uh, asymptotes are a little more uh, interesting um, as I said earlier as lambda tends to infinity throughput will of course be whatever the minimum of all the service rates is. Uh, server as far as server utilization we know that the first server uh, as lambda goes to infinity the utilization of the first server has to go to 1 because uh, eventually lambda will become greater than mu 1 because lambda is just going to infinity. But for the downstream servers the next servers their utilizations are determined by what comes out of the previous server. So, this will be the of course, we always have to have that it is minimum of 1.0. 1.0 uh, and the uh, minimum of all these service rates uh, these become the uh, effective arrival rate multiplied by tau i. Um, so, we have already done a few examples, uh, but uh, I will just show a few uh, couple of more examples lambda equal to 30 we in fact did this. So, this is just reinforcing what we done, did. Uh, throughput uh, this is service rates now we have a little bit different example this is uh, first uh, tau 1 is 10 milliseconds second tau 2 is tau 20 third tau 3 is 5 and uh, so service rates are 100 50 and 200 respectively just a little bit of change so that uh, we can see one more example. So, throughput of course at lambda equal to 30 it is less than all these 3 so throughput is 30 and then server utilizations will be rho 1 is equal to 30 uh, multiplied by 10 by 1000, rho 2 will be 30 multiplied by 20 by 1000, rho 3 is equal to 30 multiplied by 5 by 1000. And response times are actually for each one of them it is just basically I will just show for R 1 it is going to be uh, 10 divided by 1 minus. Um, 0.3 right and similarly for R2 and R3. So, now let us see uh, all these metrics for lambda equal to 70. So, remember again it is 100 uh, request per second for S1, 50 request per second for S2 and 200 request per second for S3 these are the service rates. So, compare 70 with 100, 70 with uh, 50. Uh, so, when you if you compare 70 with 100, 70 is less. So, throughput of this server is actually going to be 70, uh, but 70 is coming to uh, the, the uh, server S2 whose service rate is 50 requests per second. So, its output is only going to be 50. And uh, now 50 requests per second will come to S3. So, uh, S3 is going to be able to do 50 requests per second. So, this output here is going to be 50 and that is why of course, we have the overall throughput as 50, uh, but each server's utilization depends on what its own uh, service rate is. So, row 1 uh, is 
going to be of course 70 by 100 uh, which is 0 0.7. Row 2 uh, is going to be uh, 1 because 70 is more than 50 so the server will be fully utilized. Row 3 is going to be 50 by 200 which is basically 0 0.25. Right, so those are the server utilizations. Now what about the response time? Of course system response time we know is going to be infinity because S2 is now an unstable server. Okay, S2 is unstable. So system response time is going to be infinity. Uh, but we know that R1 uh, utilization is less than 1. So actually our uh, server 1 will have a finite response time. So R1 is going to be uh, tau which is 10 divided by 1 minus 0 0.7 this is 33.3 milliseconds. R2 is of course infinity it is an unstable server R3 is uh, uh, server 3 is stable so it is 5 divided by 1 minus uh, rho 3 which is 0 0.25 this is actually around 6.66 .66 milliseconds. Okay. Uh, so, now uh, we have seen uh, a small uh, like lambda which is 30 which is less than the entire uh, tandem queuing networks capacity, 70 which is uh, more than uh, some servers capacity less than some other. Now let, just let us take lambda to infinity. Of course, the uh, bottleneck throughput remains 50 requests per second because that is what the slowest server here is. So, throughput remains 50 requests per second. Uh, now let us go one by one again uh, as lambda goes to infinity of course uh, row 1 will go to 1 because uh, as uh, it will ex exceed 100 eventually. Uh, since So when it exceeds when the lambda here exceeds 100 the output here will become 100 but 100 is greater than 50. So uh, of course server 2 will also utilization will be 1. Uh, but when uh, arrival rate here is 100 for server 2, output rate will go to 40, throughput will go to 50, right. So uh, since 50 is less than 200, we will have row 3 again here as 50 by 200 which is 0 0.25. Again there are two servers now that are unstable both S2 and S1 are both unstable these are both unstable. So um, R sys is infinity, R1 is infinity, R2 is infinity, R3 is the same as before because uh, S2 again uh, sends the same arrival rate to S3. Uh, as as uh, when lambda was 70. So, this is 5 divided by 1 minus 0 0.25 which is 6.66 uh, .66 milliseconds. Okay. So, this last slide uh, actually just summarizes everything that we just uh, derived you can look at it later. Um, so, in this uh, lecture what we did was we saw only uh, uh, a kind of structure where requests go from one server to the other server, next server and then the, to the next server and then they leave the system. But sometimes you can have requests that have to return after this service for example after server 2 they have to return to server 1. Okay, so, in the next lecture we will look at uh, generalized open queuing networks. Thank you.